Psalms chapter 23, and we will read it together, 23, and when we've read NIV, we will read verse 5 in the message translation. One, two, let's go. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh -huh. You prepare... No, let's read NIV first. Message to Takuja Badai. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go back to verse, uh, verse 5 in the message translation. Uh -huh. Let's read together. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. A story. Today we are looking at gratitude in suffering. Being grateful even when you're going through hard times. Gratitude in suffering. A story is told about a man whose name was Horatio Spafford. He was a very big business person. He was in real estate, but he was also an attorney. He did business and he thrived so much. One morning he woke up and all the empire that he had constructed, all his business empire was down. He had lost literally everything. And as if that was not enough, within the same period, he lost his son, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. So he lost his business empire and then what followed was the son's death, a four-year-old son. And so this placed a lot of pressure in his life. And he thought if he could take a vacation, then at least the pressure would be reduced a little bit. And so he decided to put his wife in a ship together with the four daughters that were left so that they could go ahead of him to their holiday destination. And so as the wife took off, he was to join them later because there were a few things he was finishing. And then after finishing, he would join the wife and the four daughters on a vacation. So the wife took a ship and the four daughters and they went. And while on the way or in the sea, while well, on the way, the ship capsized and the four daughters perished. The wife alone was the one who was left, who survived. And so the wife called back home and told the husband, you know what? All I have lost. And this is the statement the wife said, saved alone, what shall I do? Saved alone, what shall I do? And the man got so agitated. But he knew that the wife arrived the other side alone without the four daughters. She was saved alone. She was wondering what she was going to do. And so this man decided to take the next ship so that at least he can join the wife and comfort the wife during this mourning period. And while he took the ship, as the ship was uh, on the sea, they were moving, they got right to the very place where the daughters had perished in the sea. And the captain told this man, told Horatio, this is the very place where your four daughters perished. This is the very place where the ship had capsized. And the man went quiet for a moment. 
And then when he opened his mouth to sing, this is what he sang. When peace like a river attended my way, it is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. That was the origin of that hymn we normally sing many times. Now, it's very, very easy for us to praise the Lord. It's very, very easy for us to lift our hands and bless the King of Kings when all is going well. When you have paid your rent, you say the Lord is good. I am thanking you. When you have gotten married, you say the Lord is good. I thank you. When you get a promotion at your workplace, you say the Lord is good. I thank you. But what if things are going down? What if things are going down? What of when things are not working out in your life? You have been waiting for like forever to get married, for someone to walk you down the aisle and they are not forthcoming. What if that is the situation in your life? What if you have been tamaking, you went to school, you have your degrees, but since you graduated, you have not been able to get a job. What of that time? Can you still lift up your voice and say, it is well with my soul? Can you still lift your voice and say, it is well with my soul? It is very easy for us to be able to say thank you when things are good. And today I want us to look at two levels of gratitude. Two levels of gratitude. The first level of gratitude is what I want to call the basic level of gratitude. The basic level of gratitude. The basic level of gratitude is when we are blessed, when everything has been provided for, when everything is going well, like the stories that Moses used to give his people, that when the Lord will have provided for you in the land of promise, remember to thank him. That is the basic level of gratitude. And it is the easiest level that we can always have. It is the easiest level to tell the Lord thank you when that which you wanted provided on your table has been provided for you. It is very, very easy for us to say thank you. It is easy for us to say thank you when your children are blessing your heart by virtue of them being obedient to you. That is what I'm calling the basic level of obedience. It is the level where we can see what God has provided for us. We woke up in the morning, we prayed for him to give, give us our daily bread and he did. It's quite easy for us to say thank you. But today, I want to bring the higher level of gratitude. The higher level of gratitude where you're not telling God, thank you for what he has provided. You're not telling God, thank you because all is going well with you. But you're telling him, thank you even though. Thank you even though my body is in pain. Thank you even though my marriage has failed. Thank you, even though. And this was something that David of old knew about in the psalm that we have read. And maybe we can just have it put up again. Psalms chapter 23. When David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. And then he goes ahead in verse 2. Let's go back to verse 2 because this will be our key scripture the highest level of gratitude. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Those two verses are still very good. Verse three is still very good. Let's go. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. But it gets to a place where there is a graduation from the basic level of gratitude to the highest level of gratitude where he is now saying that even though 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There are times, my brother, my sister, when things will not go the way we want them to go. And God will still be God and he is seated on the throne and he still loves you the same. But things will not be going the way you want them to go. And when that time comes, then as a Christian who has matured, because the higher level of gratitude is the level of mature gratitude. When you get to that level, when things will be so difficult in your life, you'll be able to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Even though there is no fiancé that is forthcoming, even though I was in a relationship, then my, my fiancé decided to marry my friend, I will fear no evil. And I believe that's the kind of level that the Lord would have us get into. The highest level, the level of maturity, the level of thanking God even though things are difficult. Because when we learn to get to a place where we can thank God, even when things are difficult, then the Lord will see in the depths of your heart that you are not just blessing him because of what he has done, but you are blessing him because of who he is. He remains to be God. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms, Psalms 33, Psalms, I think, 33, which, chapter 11, sorry, Psalms chapter 11, which says that what will the righteous one do when the foundations are shaken? And as at now, you know that foundations can be shaken. Foundations can be shaken. When they are shaken, the Lord has not relocated to the mountains, neither has he left his throne. And so we will come to a point of saying, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. At that time, you could be at the graveside of a loved one, but even though my loved one has departed from me, I will fear no evil. You, your house could have been locked. There are two padlocks, big padlocks on your door, but you're saying, even though... I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. And why was he saying he will fear no evil? Let's have verse 4 still. He says, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I think the greatest thing for a Christian is not when things are going well. It is the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is with us in whatever situation we are going through. When he is with you or he is with me, that is enough. And no wonder there is a, a Sunday school child who was told to memorize this particular, uh, uh, this particular chapter. And this is what he came to say on a Sunday when the teacher asked them now to start uh, quoting their memory, uh, memory verses. He stood up and he had forgotten everything that he had memorized. And this is what he said, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. That's all I want. Things may be difficult, but if the Lord is with me in the situation, that's all I want. I will still arise and bless the name of the Lord. I will still arise and have a song in my heart, even when things look like they are not adding up. Why? Because the Lord is in my boat. Praise the name of the Lord. As we celebrate the 40 years as a church, if we were to have a chance to speak to our bishop and mom, there have been situations that are even though. Don't be cheated that all has been smooth. There are situations, maybe they sat in their house and they said even though. But because the Lord is with me, I will fear no evil. And because of that, even though today you are sitting here, today I'm standing here. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. 
even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. As we go on in that particular uh, verse, he says what? That your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What else do we need when things are difficult? We need the Lord to be with us. We need his rod. We need his staff to comfort us. And I was wondering, what is the rod and what is the staff? When things are difficult in our lives, God knows it's very easy for us to go astray. No wonder we normally see when a woman is married for a long time and a child is not forthcoming. When you have stayed for a long time, you're not getting a job. You're being told there is muambaji anakuwaga na pale kwa village. Sini kupeleke. The Lord knows we can go astray. And that's why we need his rod and his, comf uh, his staff to comfort us so that we can stay on course. We can stay in his presence and not go astray. In the olden days, the Jews had these two things when they were shepherding the sheep. They had a rod. A rod was something that looked like a rungu. Rungu-like. But a staff had a hook. It was a stick that had a hook like this. So this is what would happen. In case there was danger that was coming to attack the sheep, then the rod would come in handy. The shepherd would get the rod and hit whatever was the predator to the sheep. Today, I want to tell you that the Lord is the good shepherd. And for as long as we will stay in his presence when things are difficult, when danger will come, he will use the rod to do what? To hit the enemy and the enemy will depart. What was the use of the staff with a hook? In case you wanted to stray to places that were not tried, this is what he'd do with the sheep. He would put the hook, get hold of the neck of the sheep and bring it back. And this morning I want to tell you something. That the Lord has both a rod and a hook. A rod to make sure he finishes your enemy and a staff to make sure that he brings you back to the way. And therefore we can be able to say that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Tell your neighbor, I will fear no evil. Tell them things may be tough, but I will fear no evil. Praise the name of the Lord. I will fear no evil. Then when we get to verse 5, he says what? He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. In other words, hafukuzi adui ahambie tokeni kwanza anataka kufit. Ah ah, analeta the six course dinner right when the enemies are watching. Hallelujah. He knows the kind of suffering that you are going through. And so he will place his six course dinner right in the presence of your enemy. Now the challenge is, will you keep focusing on the enemy or will you eat the meal that has been given to you? I was just thinking of a dining table. <laughs> and I was thinking, my Lord has already set the table. And then he is seated at the head of the table. And I'm seated here. And I'm supposed to be focusing on him. On my right side, see dining table in a na viti sita. Sindio? Eh, hapa ivi, kuna what? Kuna danger, yeah? There is an enemy seated here. There's another enemy seated there. Maybe this enemy is the enemy of, um, of, of lack or of poverty. This other enemy that is sitting next to me is my marriage that is not working. This other enemy is my job place. Things are not, are not working very well. Whatever enemy it is that is surrounding you, they are all seated around that dining hall table. But you know what? The meal is not meant for them. The meal is meant for me. Hallelujah. It is meant for me. And so my focus will be the meal and my savior who has set that table in front of me in the presence of my enemies. 
I don't know what it is that you are going through, but I want to tell you one thing, that Bwana ni mchungaji wako. I sing a song, a song, and say, Lord, it feels so far away, a million miles or more, it feels today. It's not that I have lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. For I don't know what to say, I don't know where to start, but as you give the grace, with all that's in my heart, I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing, I don't know what sorrow you are going through today. I don't know what it is that has bombarded you and you've been feeling like you want to give up. I want to challenge you this morning that the Lord is your shepherd. And therefore you can arise and say, I will sing. If singing in English will not make sense because of the challenges that I'm going through, then I will sing in my mother tongue, the language that I understand best, praise the name of the Lord. But I'm not going under. Tell your neighbor, I am not going under. I will praise the name of the Lord. Tell them I may not have rent, but I'm not going under. Tell them I may be sick. The doctors say that I'm unwell, but I'm not going under. Tell them I may not have a fiancé, but I'm not going under. I will praise the name of the Lord. I will arise and dance before the Lord. Because his rod and his, comfort and his staff, they comfort me. I will arise, praise the name of the Lord. And I want us to arise and just do exactly that. I don't know what it is that you're telling today. You know what? You challenge. You have been challenging me, but I've known better. I am not going under. I will praise the name of the Lord. If you could just lift your voice and say, I am praising the name of the Lord today. Lift your voice and worship him. Give him the highest praise in the house. Give him the highest gratitude in the house. And say, even though, even though, Oh, things are not working out for me I will praise the name of the Lord because I know that I'm not going under I am not going under I am praising the name of the Lord things are not working but I'm praising the name of the Lord yes the economy is as it, as it is but I'm praising the name of the Lord yes my children are having trouble but I'm praising the name of the Lord Today we are praising the Lord even though we are not praising for, we are praising even though. Yes, it's easy to praise for, but praising even though is where we call it maturity. We will praise it even though in the name of Jesus. Father, we exalt your name. We give you praise, our Father. We honor you, Jehovah. We adore you because you have been so good to us, our Father. We give you praise, our God. We thank you, King of Kings. We thank you because we know you are good, Jehovah God. Come on, lift your voice and just worship the King of Kings. Worship the King of Kings. In other words, the Lord has set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He has set a table before you in the presence of your enemy. You can have that sumptuous meal and bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Father, we exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, my master. Oh, we bless your name, Jehovah. Hakika, we manas of Zitani fuata mimi Nitaka nyumbani mwabwana Siku zote za maisha
someone here, you've been feeling like giving up because of the things you're going through. You're saying this salvation is not working. You're saying, Lord, I've prayed, but things are not working. Just briefly, briefly, if you could run here to the front and get hold of your miracle today by praising the name of the Lord. I don't know what it is that you're going through. I wanted to walk away, but I feel it would be necessary for us to just give you a chance today. Yes, things have not been working. Oh yes, you can run to the front here today. You can just run right here. There will be somebody who will pray with you, even as we sing that song for the last time. Hakika Manazofa Bili Zitani Fuatamimi Nitaka Maybe you're there, you've never given your life to Christ. And so when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, you do not have any who can be with you. Today is the day for you to make a decision and come before the Lord, before the Lord. Oh, shalabakati azai. Thank you, Jesus. We are choosing to praise the Lord even though we are worshiping even though. We are thanking him even though. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. You have been good. You have been good. You have been good. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.